Monday, October the 18th, 2010. I'm down in Marlow Bucks. Just about to uh, undertake book two, walk eight, the Marlow Circular. Approximately 12 miles. I'm rather late today. It's now just gone midday. And uh, that's due to severe underground problems in central London. So it's taken me two hours to get from central eastern London to Marlow, which is absolutely ludicrous. Just about every single underground line was messed up. Anyway, I'm away from all that stress now. Weather's good, nice sunshine, nice and cool, about 14 degrees. So let's press on. Ten minutes in. hitting uh, or leaving Higginson Park and about to walk along the banks of the Thames probably for the next couple of miles by the looks of it beautiful autumn day now looking back at Marlow's church and bridge Bisson Church Pretty easy walking at the moment and uh, will be for the next mile and a half as uh, basically following the towpath Some land here given by Miss Margaret Dickinson in 1992 to the Thames Society very decent of her. Just over the river there is the famous Bissom Abbey, famous for two things. After the dissolution of the monasteries, apparently Henry VIII gave it to his divorced wife Anne of Cleves, the only one of his wives to receive any settlement. And more recently, I do believe it's the same place where England used to train all those years ago. I believe under Graham Taylor's reign. First kite of the morning. Obvious uh, fork tail. Lots of these uh, water meadows are obviously at this time of year frequented by lots of Brent and Canada geese by the looks of it and sound of it. Memorial stone uh, in memory of Giles Every and his wife Bridget he used to organise the Marlow Regatta. The Weir, just next to Temple Lock. Temple Footbridge, over which I shall shortly be crossing. little information board here. Bridge was opened in 1989. Names all the people who have assisted with the costs. Looking back from the footbridge towards Marlow. And ahead towards my uh, destination of Aston. Interestingly enough, now following the Thames path, which of course obviously passes through my home area. Water is incredibly close to the edge here, and you can see why a rise in water level of 
about five or six inches would flood the area. Lots of chestnut leaves on the path. Very autumnal. Having crossed the footbridge, now on Hurley Lock Island. Interesting information sign at Hurley Lock. Aston, three and a half miles. Hambledon Lock, four. Henley, six and a half. I've noticed a number of these little lock keepers lodges on the uh, lock gates. Obviously used at the busy times, I guess, weekends and summer. Now in the delightful village of Hurley, which apparently was a Benedictine monastery once. The old bell in uh, Hurley. Built 1135, so that's pretty old. That's a possible lunchtime stop, but uh, apparently no walkers allowed, so maybe not. Scenery just to the north of a position of Frogmill Farm on the map. River's just behind me, about uh, 100 metres or so. And I'll rejoin it in a moment at the end of this green lane. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's a parakeet. You can certainly tell by his call. I understand our birds of prey are keeping their numbers down, which is pretty good. Interesting song though. Sticks out in our countryside like a sore thumb. Interesting combination of pheasants and geese together. Obviously on their stopover before hitting pastures further north. Quite chilly now, and obviously a bit greyer. Page 89, paragraph 2, the three-armed footpath sign has now become a two-armed one because of this new fencing. So here's a metal gate that you go through. There's a green path up there that you could previously have walked up, I presume. And there's the fine country house on the hill, mentioned in the text. Still on the Thames path, mind you. Coming up two o'clock, just on the fringes of Aston, which is where I aim to have my lunch. Sun's back out now, 10 minutes after uh, me saying it was gray and chilly. The presence of the sun makes all the difference, it's much warmer. These are fine views from that big country house, which is Cullum Court on the map. Lots of leaf miner here. Horse chestnuts are going to be devastated if they're not careful. Loads of those parakeets in the background are following me. The Flower Pot Hotel in Aston, which is the uh, first of the recommended lunchtime stops. Second one being in Hambledon, which will pass 
after my lunch anyway, because I'll be having that very shortly. Piglets down by Ferry Cottage. I've heard of the black sheep, but uh, here's the black piglet. And there's mum over there, I should imagine. It's a kite silhouetted on the skyline. Classic position there. Bare branch. This must be his domain. Right, half past two, and my uh, lunchtime view today is Hamble and Lock and Weir. There's my lunchtime companion, solitary swan. and fresh. Chill on the air. Beautiful. This is the 360 panorama from my dining chair. And today's dining chair has been uh, dedicated by somebody called Zingu Kao from his friends and fellow canoeists at Chalfont Park Canoe Club. Lovely. Thank you, Zingu. Great position. Let's get cracking on the old food. Another bird there that likes to sit on top of trees, just, like, just as he would do at the sea, is that uh, cormorant, I believe it is. It's got to tell between a corman and a shag. But there he is, preening himself. Lovely, well done. Drying out the old wings. That's it, give him a good old shake. What are you after? Okay. I'm going to throw that ball again, do you? 